Hey friends, grace and peace. Welcome back to another midweek prayer service here at First Presbyterian Church. I'm excited that you have joined us today. Uh, it's an odd week here around the church, in part because uh, on my calendar, previous to any coronavirus, uh, I wasn't scheduled to be here this week. Uh, this week, I should have been sitting by the Chesapeake Bay eating crab cakes and enjoying the city of Baltimore, uh, because this week was supposed to be the time in which the larger denomination, the Presbyterian Church USA, was planning to gather for our biannual business meeting of the General Assembly. And so uh, I had planned to go and to attend that business meeting, to see old friends, to participate in worship, and to watch the, the business and the work of the church happen in person. Unfortunately, because of coronavirus, uh, that event was canceled in person, but this week it is happening through the magic of Zoom. So if you're interested in what the Presbyterian Church is up to, you too can, can join in on the live stream. That uh, will happen this Friday and this Saturday. But previous today, the assembly actually met last week, last Friday and Saturday, and they met to elect our new co-moderators of the General Assembly. These are people who serve as ambassadors for the denomination for the next two years, and they also serve to moderate the business meeting of this week. And so we are excited to celebrate and to welcome Alona Street Stewart and Gregory Bentley as our new co-moderators. I've been following the workings of General Assembly for almost a decade now, uh, and this is the first time that I can remember that that election happened on the first ballot. Uh, Alona Street, Stewart, and Gregory Bentley received 90% of the vote, uh, which is just astounding. So we are excited for the many ways that they will help lead this denomination over the next two years. So be on the lookout uh, for more information about that and uh, check out the workings of General Assembly this week through the power of technology. As we gather today, I invite you to join me in prayer. Eternal God, your hand shaped our lives by grace, and your hand rescued us from sin by love. May your hand again guide us through this day, shielding us from all evil, strengthening us to do justice and do love. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
the piece of scripture that I want to share with us today comes from the really short book in our Old Testament, the book of Jonah. It's only four chapters long, and as you might recall, uh, Jonah is this prophet that God calls to go to Nineveh, the capital city of uh, the evil empire, uh, and to preach uh, forgiveness and repentance uh, to these folks. And in response, Jonah runs away. As you might recall, he gets swallowed by a whale or a big fish, and he gets spit up on the shoreline, uh, and he goes to Nineveh and he does what God asks. And so we, we pick up right after uh, Jonah has gone through the city of Nineveh preaching, and God notices that the citizens of Nineveh uh, heed that message. They seek forgiveness, they turn to God, and in return, God shows mercy and compassion. Uh, and Jonah's fairly upset with this. And so we pick it up in the fourth chapter. Then the Lord God provided a shrub, and it grew up over Jonah, providing shade for his head and saving him from his misery. Jonah was very happy about the shrub, but God provided a worm the next day at dawn, and it attacked the shrub, so it died. Then as the sun rose, God provided a dry east wind, and the sun beat down on Jonah's head so that he became faint. He begged that he might die, saying, It's better for me to die than to live. God said to Jonah, Is your anger about the shrub a good thing? And Jonah said, Yes, my anger is good, even to the point of death. But the Lord said, You pitied the shrub for which you did not work and which you did not raise. It grew in a night and it perished in a night. Yet, for my part, can't I pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 people who can't tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I picked that particular scripture for today's midweek prayer service because I'm intrigued by Jonah's discomfort. He is uncomfortable with being sent to Nineveh. He is uncomfortable, you can tell through the text, walking through the city and preaching forgiveness. It's almost as if he walks through this great city and, and he whispers to them, repent, repent almost in hopes that they won't hear the message at all, and, and God will in fact make good on God's promises and destroy the city. Uh, but that's not what happens. They hear the message, they repent, and God shows mercy and compassion on them. It's not exactly what Jonah was hoping for. And so he darts out of the city upset and angry, and, and God provides a bush to soothe his discomfort in the heat and in the blowing wind. And then God kills the bush through a worm. And Jonah speaks about his anger. His anger that the bush is gone, how he is uncomfortable again. And God asks him, is, is this anger any good? And Jonah says, yes, even to the point of death. And in some ways, I'd agree with Jonah. His discomfort is good. I think our discomfort is good. In the past couple of days, I think we've all become uncomfortable at some point either uncomfortable with the growing tension in the United States, whether that's over uh, politics or over race. You might be uncomfortable with the growing number of coronavirus cases that seem to be spiking in recent days as, as we slowly reopen our cities. This is a time that has made all of us uncomfortable for at least one reason or another. And I think in these moments, God is asking us, is your discomfort good? And in part, our response should be, yes, our discomfort is good. Because I think in this discomfort, we are learning new things about ourselves. We're learning new things about the church. We're learning new things about society. And so my prayer is that as I hope we start to come out of this season of life as we slowly begin to safely return to in-person gatherings, as, as we start to gather with families and friends again, 
that we might learn from these moments of discomfort. We might find the things that need to get thrown away in our world that no longer serve us or serve God. And I hope that uh, we'll do the same for the church. That in this season we have learned uh, about the things that uh, we may not need to hold on to anymore. And we've realized the things that are of greater importance to us. The things that serve the kingdom of God. That serve us as disciples of Jesus. And so even in the midst of our discomfort, I think God is teaching us new lessons. God is imploring us to learn. God is asking us if this discomfort is good. Is it useful? And our response is yes. This is indeed good. It's not just a pain in the neck or a thorn in our side, but this season of life is useful for us in the future. And so uh, my prayer for all of us is that in this season we might be open to learning, we might be open to the discomfort in our world, and that we might learn and grow to be better disciples of Jesus through all of this. It's my prayer and it's my hope. And so let us pray together. Holy and eternal God, we give you thanks for the discomfort. We give you thanks for the many ways that you are imploring us to learn about ourselves, about our world, and are about you. And so we ask that in these moments of this discomfort, when we are uncertain of what will happen next, when we are a little fearful of the future, that you might come and you surround us with your peace. You might speak to us in words that are clear and unmistakable. That you might speak a word of peace and of hope. And that you might indeed ask us, is this good? And I pray that we might respond, yes. And in all of this, we might become closer to you. That we might learn how to be better disciples. And how we might share your word of mercy, and in love with the world. It's for this that we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, as always, even through the midst of the discomfort, I pray that you might remember that no matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, that you are loved. You are loved by Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who rests with each and every one of us tonight, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.